Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives, as always. We have our good friend Sam Clement and Courtney Trosh. Y'all say hello. How's it going? Hey, John. Hey, guys. Uh, guys, i got to tell you this. It's, uh, it's exciting times at the Norris House. It always is exciting times at the Norris House. I was asking Beth whether or not she wanted to watch a movie that we could um, download or stream from one of the various streaming channels that we seem to get suckered into. And uh, she goes, what would you like to watch? And I said, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe that thing that won all the uh, Academy Awards this year. And she goes, everything, everywhere, all at once, yeah. or whatever the name of it is. And she read about it. And she said, I'm not going to watch that. It seems too complicated and weird. And I said, well, that's kind of what I want to watch. And she goes, well, and I said, what do you want to watch? And she gave me something else and just same old, same old type stuff. I'm just like, golly, what's going on? It's, if it's creative, it's out there, it turns people off. If it's not creative, it's the same old stuff we've seen repackaged a million different ways. And I've told, I've told you all this plenty of times. If it's not a new Marvel book, Avengers, all that, I don't, I don't get into comic books. I don't, I don't understand. And then it's John Wick number four is coming out. Yeah. You know, and then it's another iteration of something else. Like and the it's Fast all, and Furious series. Yeah, like it's ten like of them. ten, ten of them. It's okay. I got the point after after 30 minutes of the first one, what this was all going to be about. Maybe I'm sounding like a curmudgeon, a misanthrope, all that stuff. Courtney, I will tell you, though, when I watched some of the Academy Awards the other night, I couldn't sit through all of it. I didn't know what they were talking about. Didn't know who the stars <laughs> were, and I didn't know who the movies were. I did come to the conclusion, I've been feeling this way for a while, that there does seem to be a lack of creativity in our creative arts in this country. I would agree, and I also wonder if it's a generational thing where... You know, John, for for you, it might be that we're already on like the second or third remake. And for me, like what I remember and what I thought the first remake was, was really already the second remake. And Sam sees these remakes and thinks, oh, these are brand new films. Yeah, I mean, there's probably people like uh, The Lion King's probably a good example. Yeah. That came out, what? Two, three years ago, the the, the Lion King. The, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Well, that's his Sorry point. there, Sam. That's his point. It's, it's a little bit older than that. But you ask some young kids, and that may very right. well be what they consider the first. Oh, Lion all I can King. say to that is, kids these days. I was shocked when I found out Tobey Maguire is no longer Spider Man, and uh, actually, I was kind of shocked when Christopher Reeves. Well, it's not, no longer Spider-Man. I've well, never seen a Spider-Man movie. Well, well you think about, think about how Superman. many actors have been Batman. Yeah. Oh, it's ridiculous. Right? I mean, you can't even... They keep remaking, and and those are all reboots. James Bond. James Bond. But I think... That's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you think is the most remade film? Of all times? Of, of all time. Most remade the film. Identical film? I don't so not like well, iterations. So they of, might be. Second, it's right? the same story. It might be called different things, but it's ultimately the same story. I'm, okay, I've I cheated. Think, I've already I, looked this up. I, I, you can't I've, look I've, at I've got one in my head. You go another thing. I think I think I might like know this. Spider Man. No, no. I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say it's good. You got to go way back. I'm thinking yeah. Charles Dickens. I'm thinking a Christmas story. <laughs> I think you totally cheated. I, how did really? I cheat? Well, you get your hands all over the paper. Okay. Well, yes, you are. Ding ding ding. You are correct. Well, listen, John. I tell you, you know, there's 1902 a, was the. Well, no, I guess they too. I've never seen that original. version of it. No, I mean they had the, the Fonz. Henry Winkler did one called An American Christmas Carol. Then we have Jim Scrooge, Carrey, yeah. and the, I mean Jim Carrey's played it. I think there's Scrooge. seven, seven different versions. Oh, I think there's probably even more than that. Maybe twelve. But you know, even more so than the, all the constant remakes in the. Uh, movie industry some of the songs i think aren't quite as good and you know everyone say the music was much better in my generation but sam in my case it was um and then also i would say books have gotten to be the same way as well and again i am running the risk of being very curmudgeon like courtney looks like she's got another question for us oh i do well first of all i would like you to clarify what do you consider uh, the music of your generation john i think it's just Good old fashioned rock and roll is also, and is then that the 80s? And, and then college rock as well. I, it's a, uh, it's kind of strange. When I was when I was coming along, we still listened to stuff from the sixties. Listen to the Stones. Um, uh, the Doors were popular. Then the seventies, you had the Who and Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones a little bit more. Well, the Rolling Stones started in the in the sixties. By the time we got to uh, the eighties, listen to REM, a lot of college rock. So that's the stuff with which I'm most familiar. Yeah, I think I would definitely agree that there are things that I thought, or songs that I thought were the original. Such as? Well, yes. So, such as, I think everyone could talk about Whitney Houston singing I Will Always Love You. It's a Dolly Parton song. It is a Dolly Parton song. And, 
you know, she has such a great mentality about it. She's like, I don't care. I'll, you know, enjoy Whitney no, Houston's sure version of the way. royalties. Well, that's exactly, what she said. royalties. Um, she said Whitney Houston made her more money on that song than she ever did. Right. Dolly's great. She is. Okay, so um, who, when you hear, when you think of the song I Love Rock and Roll, who do you think of? I think of Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Right. But that is not who originally wrote the song. Who did? The Arrows wrote it in 1975. Okay. Another one that I didn't think of, and apparently Britney Spears did it in 2002, so that would be more Sam's generation. Sam, um, Sam's about Britney Spears. what, six then? Oh I, don't, I don't know if I consider that my generation. Oh, my. Okay, Five. <laughs> what's, what's the question? Um, okay, so what about girls just want to have fun? Who, who do of you course think? I think of Cindy Lauper. Right. She did not write that song. It was a guy who wrote that song, well, Robert well, well, Hazard, well, in 1979. A little bit of a creeper, I think. So, well, so the point is that people have always done remakes. So are, right. we, are we just going through a little bit more of a creative slump, or or has this been a long-standing erosion in overall creativity? Right, well, I think of especially with movies, the I guess unfortunate side of, of capitalism is it goes where it kind of the least. Um, where the least amount of pushback is the easiest route you to make money. You call it the money. lowest common denominator. Yeah, some, something of that sorts. And if people are going to continue to watch the same movies and the take Fast and Furious franchise can say, hey, we know we can spend this much on one and we're going to make this much money. It's a no-brainer. It's a slam dunk. Why wouldn't they do it? And, and, and it goes back to what consumers demand and consumers clearly don't demand tons of creativity because the movies that tend to come out and make the most money are just iterations of the same movie over and over again. I mean, even the Titanic, which was the exact same, just put back out in theaters, was, I think, the number two box office movie movie recently. Are you nostalgic, yeah. though, to go back and, like, see the movie? I wasn't even born when it came out. Oh, just, oh my. Um, yeah, listen, the thing, with the, the thing with Titanic, it's a, so pretentious you can't even use the in front of it. It's simply Titanic. Like Madonna? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I knew how it ended. <laughs> the first time. So when Spoiler. I, so when I see a movie, I kind of don't want to know the ending before, before I sit down with it. That's fair. So even that's a remake. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoyed the movie, and I, I did not go see it but the, the second time. But I would... I would watch but why, that why would a why would a, a producer or a movie company stick their neck out for something with no, you know, no idea how much money it's going to make, how successful it's going to be, something creative that takes you know more risk? Why why would you do that? When because you it's supposed say, to be for the art. Like it's supposed to be why? an actual art form that you're producing. Some like you're able to read a script and come up with something like unique that would you know. Well, that sounds very, that sounds attention. very um, idealistic. I idealistic. Yeah. Well, I, I would tell you this. Um, you know, everyone wants to wax nostalgia about how things were when they were younger. Truthfully, that's right. a, there's a sense of comfort that things were better when, although no one really wants to go back when. But even so, when I'm thinking back, oh, the music was so much better. Now there'll be people like my kids these days. Well, in 20 years ago, the music was so much better when all that stuff. And so, same thing with movies and all that. I, I would say, Sam, the reason why we have so many blockbuster type stuff now is they have to do something outrageous to get fannies into the seats. You know, previously in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and even the 60s, one of the primary forms of entertainment was actually going to the movie theater. Yeah. So they just had more products out there and all that stuff. So you actually saw a lot of the same type films being made. And they could have argued that there was a lack of creativity back then. You ever seen a John Wayne movie? Uh, yeah. Okay, you've seen one. You've seen them all. Yep. You know, Rio Lobo, Rio Grande, uh, all that stuff. It's all basically uh, basically the same. You've seen a Doris Day Rock Hudson film? No. Have you? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, uh, I've never heard of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm freaking weeping here. Never heard of Doris Day Rock Hudson films. <laughs> Okay. I couldn't no. even. I couldn't even guess what. No, that was. I, I don't even. I have no idea. I don't even have a hint of an idea. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, maybe that's bad example yeah. for you too. Uh, okay, but pillow you know, talk. You heard that? That ring no, bell? No. Never heard no, of pillow I've heard, talk. I've heard of the touch, maybe. Touch of mink. That's actually with another one. No. 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 Take her. She's mine. No. Okay. I don't yeah. even know what these are. What? They're movies. But what is what is the um. <laughs> <laughs> kind of bringing it back to maybe something that Sam has seen too that, that was a remake was um, 
Remember the movie where it's like two daughter, it's twin sisters and Parent they trap. Parent Trap. Yeah, that's, that's a remake. The, yeah, yeah, it's a remake. Now I don't know if the the one so, I'm thinking was a remake. Yeah, the Lindsay Lohan was a remake. Right, Lindsay Lohan was, but yeah. I remember the original. Uh, what I, I assume yeah. is the original. I no, she was, was not the original. Not Lindsay Lohan, John. Yeah, the other one. It the had, other uh, one. had Brian Keith as the father in it. Yeah. Um, and the same thing with Freaky Friday. Did you know that? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So all these things, I mean, what is it? So we remake things once a generation, so new people well, I mean, can see. Yeah, it? once people, I mean, forget about it. Yeah, forget, forget about, about it, it, or the actors from okay. it are no longer important to the people that they're trying to demand. On an average, how long do you think Hollywood waits before producing a remake of an original film? Twenty years. Fifteen. Twenty-three years. Okay, that's about average. a generation, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So they just wait till uh, people. <laughs> that's a slam dunk, though. Why, like, why? Yeah, it was already why successful. But the, it just shows a lack of creativity, to John's point. I just said, well, that's the whole deal. What, Sam, no what Sam's saying is it's not necessarily a lack of creativity as much as a desire to make money. And, and so ultimately, you might be making an argument that that capitalism is rule of the mob, and the rule of the mob is always going to be the lowest common denominator. Yeah, and it's the path of least resistance is the path that capitalism is typically going to take. Because why would you go out and take more risk when you can take less risk and guarantee you're going to make money hand over fist. So are you saying that uh, the lack of creativity caused by capitalism is is leading to a uh, one-way uh, one way ticket to idiocracy? I, I think that's kind of a chicken <laughs> in the egg, but yeah. I mean, I, I'm not sure which is driving which, but... <laughs> Yeah, that was, maybe that's it's maybe it's like there, the banning, <laughs> banning TikTok like we talked about last week. Maybe yeah. that maybe if that happens, or seems like just yesterday we talked about that. <laughs> it does seem like that, which is interesting. You say that kids guess what the number one uh, song that's ever been remade. Yesterday, yes. by the Beatles, I knew that. You did know that. Yeah. Guess how many times it's been remade, uh, or how many variations? Isn't there a whole movie on yeah, it? So yeah, so yeah, there is. Twenty. It's, I don't it was know. like all the Beatles songs. Twenty. Twenty-five. There are 2,200 variations. Well, does that include karaoke performances? I mean, you Well, know, I guess whatever's on the cruise ship. out yeah, there public. Yeah. yeah. But I think that they, the music industry and the movie, did I say that? Music and movie industry go hand in hand because some of these songs are made famous in movies as well. Or they're like, and so that rendition that maybe are done in the movies, you know, counts as one of those variations and it kind of brings it back to popularity. So. Fair enough. I think you're right, Courtney. Thanks. I think you're absolutely right. So, so is there a lack of creativity, or are we just going through a uh, remake cycle, which apparently has always been? Uh, I think it, there's a little bit of a lack of creativity, and I think the shortened, um, you know, focus that people have now. I mean, t t to confidently yeah, yeah, yeah. go out and tell a new story takes longer than, you know, a lot of people, even if they've already seen the movie, if it's a new version of the same thing, they knew they liked the first one, they knew what it's about, and unfortunately, I think that draws probably some more people in than not knowing what a movie is. Everyone, everyone's clicked on something in Netflix and or a movie and said, five minutes in, oh, I don't think I like this. I do listen. Everyone's done it. All the time. You know, and the thing is, I mean, you're absolutely right about that. If you go back to movies from the 30s and 40s, which Sam, I mean, according to a big stretch, y'all can't even remember stuff from the early 60s. Did they have sound back I then? Would, or they? And, and yeah. color, too. Uh, the the Wizard that. of Oz. <laughs> Some of these movies had intermissions, like you were actually going to, uh, to a play. Like, oh, like Sound of the, Music. Yeah, and, and Gone with the Wind and all these things. The movies were long enough where they actually gave you an intermission to go get popcorn, go to the bathroom and all that stuff. Average movie right now is between 90 and 120 minutes. Because our attention spans have gotten so short. Would Forty-seven you, seconds. And I've even noticed that. <laughs> well done. I mean, <laughs> would you want to sit down and, and uh, spend four hours no. watching a movie? But I've even noticed and be worth the twenty dollars you spend. For and tickets. specifically, tell me about it. And specifically, action movies now. It seems like they've gotten to the 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 meat of the movie so much quicker. There's almost no buildup. I mean, there's so many movies now. It's thirty seconds in. And the action's already up. started, and it's just rock and roll for 90 minutes and doesn't slow down at all. I mean, because you have to, it's like, I mean, if you have a thousand choices, you need to be pretty interested in it pretty quickly for you to not drop, you know, cut bait and go to the next one. And speaking of rock and roll, let's move over to the Grammys, Grammy Awards, and right. music, just in general. You're talking about remakes and all that stuff. I'm going to th throw a fun, at least I think it's fun, little stat, stat at you. 
this past year, there were 91 different categories in which to win a Jeez, Grammy. 91. 91. They can't show all of them, obviously. And each one had about anywhere from 8 to 10 nominees. The first Grammy Awards, back in 1959, either one, uh, Courtney, Sam, guess how many categories there were? 91 this year. How many were four. there? Four. No, there more than four. 10. 20, oh no, 50. 28. 28. Wow. Yeah, so 28. So think about how that is mushroomed, so much so that we are now slicing the meat so thin that we have almost 70 more categories in music, meaning that it's almost a participation award. And Sam, I was kind of surprised you weren't nominated for a Grammy. I should have been. Your thoughts? I should have been. Wait, so you said there's 90? 91. 91. Well, obviously there's more musicians than 91. So it's not really a participation. I was being hyperbolic. I'm just saying that there's still so many people out there. I mean, it's still a big deal to win a Grammy. I've never watched it's any probably of those award ceremonies. Inclusive. I refuse to. Well, now I find that I never don't will. know any you of the, the artists. Names? No. No? No. Doesn't Academy seem like it would be It's all pompous. There you go. Do you ever watch those shows? I do. Do you like them? I fast forward through a lot of it now. To what? I like to watch... To see the outfits, and then I like um, to listen to the music that I like. Okay, I got There's you. a lot of music I don't like. What, that are too... So going back to the original, th- yeah. do you think there's a lack of creativity in music? I do. I, f- I feel like there is a lack of creativity. And it, it, I also feel like they play on the ignorance to that if it's 23 years or whatever it is. I mean, hearing even renditions where they've taken the blue song, which I, I can't even tell. I, th- I think it's called the blue song. It was like when um, I was in... Booba, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And you that know that was, song? Yeah. yeah. He does now because they redid it into a, another. Like they've used it a Along with a new song Who that sings came that out. Song? I don't know. Some French group. Well, it came out when I was in fifth grade, and I'm pretty sure Sam wasn't alive at that point. Probably so. not. Um, Since we're a different generation. We are. Um, but I remember it being like a big song back then. No. And now I hear it on the radio, and my kids are like, oh my gosh, it's the best song ever. And I'm like, that song's not new. Uh, I gotta tell you this one. I'm gonna do you a little bit one better than blue. Um, <laughs> so, that was just the first one that came in my head. <laughs> yes, was actually your ringtone. I thought <laughs> <laughs> you got Bastille on there. Um, yeah. Yesterday, I'm driving downtown to go to that breakfast I told you about, and all of a sudden, I'm listening to the Oldies Channel. Oldies. The Oldies Channel. It's, it's really like recent songs for you, <laughs> because it is for me. So I figured it. Sorry. If I had a bucket of water, <laughs> dump it yeah, on your you head. Got a cup. <laughs> that big Stanley cups. You, she buys like a lunatic. We get like a dozen of me. I have like, two, John. Like I have two. Cup. I have brand loyalty. <laughs> so, I was sitting there listening to the Oldies Channel, one hundred six point nine here in Birmingham, and they're playing "Come Together." You ever heard of that song? Yes. Yeah. Come Who sings it? Beatles. Well, unfortunately, no. It was Aerosmith singing this oh, this version nice. of it. No. Isn't the Beatles sing that? It was. I mean, there's a Beatles tune. But in Aerosmith, first of all, Aerosmith, okay, maybe they're oldies. But I told you yesterday, also, the day before I was listening on the way into work, they played Girls, Girls, Girls by Motley Crue. And then they followed it up with Bad Medicine from Bon Jovi. Yeah, those are all really, I mean, they're old songs. Ancient. They are not old songs, Courtney. John, they are playing songs from the early 2000s. Those songs, on, those songs can get old... AARP benefits. Oh, point. my. Oh, my. We're going to have an impromptu employee review. For <laughs> Sam. <laughs> so, so would you say that there is a lack of creativity when stupid, fresh Motley Crue and something that's real relevant these days is being on the <laughs> oldies channel? Well, I just think our whole country... Uh, largely has pretty low standards for, for and you, entertainment. Yeah, you think about the music, the new music that's coming out. I mean, it's not, and maybe that's because now I'm, I've, I've switched generations yeah, where I'm on the tail end and I'm like, yeah. what are those young whippersnappers listening to? So you, you, you use the word whippersnappers, huh? I was at John's fraternity's house, and all of a sudden they're playing all these things I've never heard of. And it's this one called Ice Cold, Long Neck, Beers Never Broke My Heart. Pretty good lyric. But he's, he's cranking it out like no, there's nobody's business. I'm going, kids know all these songs. I've never even heard of them. Because you're guess, listening to the oldies station. And that's, that's part of the problem with it. I am listening to the oldies channel. And all now, the Apple Music, I get to listen to whatever I want. Uh, Apple right. Music, I listen to classic oldies. And classic oldies ain't bon jo- John Bon Jovi. It's not George Michael. It's The Doors, Beatles. Might even put CCR in there. Yeah. Although that still seems pretty fresh and new to me. 
even like live better than Ezra. All those songs now are <laughs> from the '90s and early thousand. I mean, they're now on Ezra. the. I guess better than Ezra's oldie music for you too. I don't, I don't even know what that song is. That's a group. It's <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Not a song. My point. <laughs> All right. Never even heard of that. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> one more thing I wanted to share. You know, I like the statistics. So, have you heard of... We'll just play, of yeah, we'll just play with uh, Sam's lack of knowledge on music. Um, have you heard of Hallelujah? Yeah. By okay. who? By Leonard Cohen? Yeah. Okay, we'll play with another one. My Way? By Sinatra? By Sinatra? Yeah. yeah. But I bet, how, how do you know that song? From Sinatra. Oh, okay. Well, I a lot of people know from Family Quite, Guy. I'm going to tell you this one. Well, from Family Guy? Yes. I'm going to tell you These this These are one. some of the most remade songs. This will show you how old I am. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, you don't need to agree before you even know what I'm saying. <laughs> I saw Sinatra in concert. Did you really? I did. It was his last concert tour before he croaked yes. the next spring. So. Oh, wow. So I got to, I got to see it's Sinatra. It's like George Strait. I think he Paul keeps claiming it's his Jeff last Buckley. one. Jeff Buckley. Yeah. George Strait. George Strait. Yeah. It's that's always that's old story. music. Easy. That's old music. Easy. Over the Rainbow and I Can't Get No Satisfaction are the other two uh, most remade songs. Over the Rainbow, the one by the uh, Hawaiian the dude guy, is, is, he? is. That's a, awesome. I Can't Get No Satisfaction, it is kind of creepy watching 80-year-old Mick uh, Jagger sing that song now. Yeah. I think everything he does is probably kind of creepy. <laughs> but think that's about how many deal. movies and stuff they've redone. I mean, it's just... So, anyways... In any event, I think we could go on and on and on. I think what you're actually hearing here today are some generational differences about the creativity in music and uh, just overall entertainment. And the reason why Hollywood and others remakes things so so frequently, so fresh eyes can look at a fr- at the same old story in a new way. I guess you could say that, and that way companies can make money all over again. So a lack of creativity or just good old fashioned business sense. Sam, what's your vote? Uh, both. If you had to put a weighting on them, uh, business business decision. It's about sixty forty. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Courtney? What do you say? I'd say more than that. I'd say seventy five percent. I think part of it too, though, I would argue, is um, that there's also a need for more content, just based off of how many streaming sites and stuff like that that you have. You're saying uh, things are getting watered down. Correct, because we just need more Quantity. content to drive. Right, and yeah. it's like, okay, we're both going to do the same themed movie or the whatever, and we're going to put it on these two different. It's so, sort of like trying to get Hallmark and, uh, and Lifetime Christmas movies. Yep. Because you're going to pay for subscriptions to both or one or the other. So they've got to entice you. And so they're fighting for the it's same, all the same demographic. Thing. It's right. Every, everyone's upper middle class and they all live in Vermont. Um, <laughs> celebrate Christmas with a meat cute. You ever think about that? Sure. Well, <laughs> meat cute. That. Do you know what that is? No. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there are generational differences on a yes. lot of stuff here today. And uh, so it's actually maybe not necessarily as much of a lack of creativity as much as good old-fashioned business sense. And telling the same stories over and over again actually can be, frankly, profitable. And then also, is it really all that bad that we remake A Christmas Carol seven, eight times when the fact it's a great story and the story never gets old and needs to be retold and retold in a way that people maybe, just maybe, will get up and go pick up the book itself and uh, read it and get to expand their horizons a little bit. Same your thoughts on that. Hard to argue with. I think so, too. Yeah. All right. Well, gang, thank you all so much for listening. We always love to hear from you all. So if you have any comments or questions, please, by all means, let us know. You can always drop us a line at trainingperspectives at oakworth.com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast Outlet of Your Choice. As always, if you're interested in reading more, hearing more of what we have to say or what we think, you can always go to oakworth.com, take a look underneath the Thought Leadership tab in order to find all kinds of exciting information. With that, I'm going to give you guys one last chance to say something on this topic. That's all I got. That's it, John. That's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.